off to see the wizard. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be exploring 10 pieces of interesting trivia about the iconic 1939 film adaptation of The Wizard of Oz. Well, come on, then. What are we waiting for? Nothing. Let's hurry. Yes, let's run. <laughs> Number 10. MGM bought The Wizard. Kicking off our list is the fact that MGM Studios bought the rights to L. Frank Baum's 1900 novel, The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, for the then insane price of $75,000. Think you didn't have any brains at all. They did so only to tone it down by removing all of its gruesome violence. Ouch! What do you think you're doing? Such as a scene in which the Tin Man beheads a pack of wolves. Come on, get up and fight, you shivering junkyard. This reimagining required 14 writers, five directors, and a rigorous five-month schedule to finally shoot. You call that long? Why, you just begun! Number 9. Box Office Flop This groundbreaking fantasy film introduced most filmgoers to Technicolor film after defying expectations with its introductory scenes. I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. Despite the breathtaking novelty, stellar reviews, and Academy recognition, the movie failed to earn back its $3 million budget, or even leave an immediate impact on popular culture. It's the Wicked Witch! What do we do? Help! Help! It's no use screaming at a time like this! Both only happened a decade later when it was re-released in theaters and shown on television, proving that it was far ahead of its time. Number 8, The Leading Lady. I'm Dorothy Gale from Kansas. Oh. Dorothy is 12 years old, and Judy Garland was 17. She was cast after the studio failed to nab younger and more popular actresses, including Shirley Temple. Well, in that case, Daddy, we might as well move on. This is a bit awkward. Garland was then forced to wear a painful corset to flatten her chest after initially being outfitted with a blonde wig and baby doll makeup. Can you even dye my eyes to match my doll? Uh-huh. For her trouble, she was honored with an Academy Juvenile Award, which she lovingly referred to as the Munchkin Award. Number 7. The Munchkins. It's all right. You may all come out and thank her. Come out, come out. These unforgettable little people have a story of their own. The vertically challenged actors who played the Munchkins mostly came from Europe and used their participation in the film as a chance to escape Nazi persecution. The Munchkins are happy because you have freed them from the Wicked Witch of the East. Most were unable to speak English, so their voices were dubbed. Follow the yellow brick road. Follow the yellow brick road. Shockingly, while they were each paid $50 a week, Toto the dog fetched a salary of $125. Toto's my dog. <laughs> well, I'm a little muddled. At least the Munchkins were finally awarded their own star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 2007. How about that? <laughs> Number 6. The Source Material Curious how Oz got his name? Well, author L. Frank Baum had a filing cabinet drawer labeled O to Z, which he claims provided the inspiration. He really must be a wonderful wizard to live in a city like that. Moreover, his Oz was a much more realistic land, and not the dreamscape of the film populated with versions of Dorothy's friends and family from Kansas. Speaking of which, Dorothy's slippers were also changed from silver to ruby so they could really pop with Technicolor. Only five pairs exist today, and each are worth over $666,000. Give them back to me. Give them back. Keep tight inside of them. Their magic must be very powerful, or she wouldn't want them so badly. Number five, hazardous work conditions. Nothing was painless on this production. Tin Man's original makeup contained aluminum dust, which coated actor Buddy Epson's lungs. A near-fatal misjudgment, he was hospitalized and MGM was forced to quietly recast his role. Ma, 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 my goodness, I can talk again. The replacement, Jack Haley, was instead outfitted with aluminum paste, so while his lungs were safe, it infected his eyes. Thankfully, he recovered. Oh, don't cross. <laughs> You'll rust so dreadfully. Number four, the lion's share of the pain. I hope my strength holds out. I hope your tail holds out. While the Tin Man costume was dangerous, the cowardly lion's getup was equally unbearable. His costume weighed 90 pounds and was made from real lion skin. What did you do that for? With a set temperature at 100 degrees Fahrenheit thanks to the lights, the suit was always soaked with sweat. <laughs> My goodness, what a fuss you're making! Meanwhile, the Scarecrow's makeup included a rubber prosthetic that left a cloth-like pattern on the actor's face that took nearly a year to fade away. Oh, joy! Rapture! 
Number three, the Wicked Witch. Witches are old and ugly. What was that? Actress Margaret Hamilton played the Wicked Witch, giving a performance so frightening that her scenes had to be edited down. You stay out of this, Glinda, or I'll fix you as well! Ironically, she was previously a kindergarten teacher that adored the very children that were destined to fear her for decades. <laughs> As if this wasn't enough of a burn, she was hospitalized with actual burns following a botched explosion, which caught fire to her conductive copper makeup. It's all right, you can get up, she's gone. Refusing other pyrotechnic scenes, a stand-in was brought in, who was also severely burned. I'm burning, I'm burning. Number two, Dark Side of the Rainbow. Coincidence or not, music lovers and movie aficionados discovered in 1995 that Pink Floyd's 1973 album, The Dark Side of the Moon, seamlessly matched many of the scenes from the classic film. I'll see you on the dark side of the moon. In 2000, a redubbed version of the film featuring the music was released on television, while other versions have since sprung up on the web. Number one, the semi-sequel. Oh, Tin Woodsman, what happened to you? Taking the top spot on our list is the fact that Disney's 1985 film, The Return to Oz, is not an official sequel of MGM's 1939 classic. Come on, we'll go tell Uncle Henry and Auntie M. Regardless, it was awarded a Guinness record for being the sequel made the longest time after the original, with a 46-year gap. Would you please check my head for signs of spoiling? Another box office failure, this adaptation was much grimmer, not a musical, and required Disney to license MGM's Ruby Slippers. Goodbye, Dorothy. Oh no. I mean, I didn't expect to go so soon. Which piece of Oz trivia did you find the most interesting? I'll never forget any of you. Give my love to all the chickens! Feel free to add any that we missed to the comments thread, and for more informative and entertaining top tens, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. I said go! Oh.